Hi, I'm Rachel here with my cat Leia to talk about my Jewish science fiction and fantasy reads of December. Science fiction and fantasy are two genres that I'd like to read more. Jewish fiction is probably the genre, if there is such a category, that I read the most. I thought, what better way to end 2016 than by combining the two? I came across all three of these books on the Jewish Book Council website. The authors have all written guest posts for the organization's blog, which I've linked down below. I thought I'd start first with King of Shards by Matthew Kressel. The novel teams Jewish mysticism with fantasy world building. Our hero, Daniel Fisher, is a Lamed Vovnik who is brought by demons to another universe. Lamed Vovniks are a concept from the Talmud that refer to 36 people who through their righteousness unknowingly hold up the earth from destruction. So of course it's a big deal when clueless Daniel is plucked from his sham of a wedding. When he leaves the world, we are all in danger. Unsurprisingly, for someone who has created such a thoroughly Jewish fantasy world, Kressel takes issue with the belief that Jews don't have much to offer the genre. He writes, Judaism, like all religions, is full of awe and magic and terror and wonder. And those brought up in its traditions who have been steeped in its rich folk tales cannot help but be influenced by its otherworldly themes. When observant Jews recite at the end of Sukkot, may I merit in the coming year to dwell in the sukkah of the skin of Leviathan, the fantasy of writer among them thinks of ancient sea serpents and victories over unconquerable enemies. When Jews say kaina hore to ward off the evil eye, the fantasy writer thinks of magical talismans and charms to keep evil at bay. And one doesn't even need to be a Jewish writer to be influenced by Judaism's magical stories. I enjoyed the adventure aspects of this novel, as well as its moral compass about the importance of empathy over cruelty. But I found the characters to be a little flat outside of the immediacy of the plot. Still, the sequel, Queen of Static, is due to come out in March, and I'll probably put it on my to-read list. The second book I want to talk about is Central Station by Lavi Tidhar. In his futuristic setting, he imagines a space station existing between Jewish Tel Aviv and Arab Jaffa. Through short stories, he chronicles some of the foibles of the residents who live around the area. Tidhar is a prolific writer, enough so that even though he didn't contribute to JBC in honor of Central Station, he wrote several blog posts for some of his earlier works. Perhaps with foreshadowing to his upcoming collection, he wrote this in December of 2011. Israel is enjoying something of an awakening in terms of Jewish fantasy and science fiction. Recently, it has produced the first true masterpiece of Israeli SF, the novel Kfor by Shimon Adath. It is an astonishing novel, following the lives of several characters in the Jewish city slash country of Tel Aviv in 500 years' time, and combining science fiction, detective fiction, poetry, and absolutely wonderful, heartbreakingly beautiful writing. Central Station takes us into the all-too-human desires of future people. But because this is the future, we aren't just dealing with humans, we are also dealing with artificial life and the mysterious others, beings that only exist in virtual reality. Humans are very invested in virtual reality. If they are not spending their days manning spaceships in the book's version of a massive multi-roleplayer game, then they are at least tapped into the conversation. The conversation is basically like social media on speed. Human beings have a node in their bodies where they can plug in and be aware of the activity of all sentient beings across the galaxy. The concepts fascinated me, and I like the idea that a more digital world doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. I also love Tithar's imagining of Jewish and Israeli expression in the future. But it was difficult to get into at first, and I didn't necessarily connect with all of the characters. I'm not very familiar with reading hard science fiction, but I think that I've whet my appetite. Finally, I'd like to talk about my favorite of the three novels, Last Song Before Night by Alana C. Meyer. Her high fantasy novel is arguably incredibly un-Jewish. It takes place in a medieval setting inspired by the world of troubadours, composers of lyric poetry from the 10th to 12th centuries in Europe. In this fantasy world, the poets have lost access to their powerful magic and a diverse cast of characters goes quest to me to either change or maintain the status quo. But on JBC, Meyer explains how the home where she wrote this novel, Jerusalem, permeated her capital city, Tamberlin. 
She writes, There was something about the Mediterranean abundance of that place that I wanted for my capital city of Tamberlin, where arts, culture, and beauty flourish alongside brutality. So when I wrote lovingly of pale stone and jasmine scents and red wine, these seemed appropriate for the Mediterranean sort of atmosphere that I wanted. But the atmosphere and aesthetic are closer to the city where I was living at the time, a place that has always been precious to me, even as my re relationship with it is complex. Is there anyone whose relationship with Jerusalem is not complex? Later, she writes about how the journey of one of her characters was somewhat of a critique of an Orthodox Jewish upbringing for women, saying, Her experience represents the ideal of what the Orthodox woman is supposed to be, cultivated, innocent, sheltered behind walls, and content for marriage to take central stage in her life. When her life's security is shattered, none of these qualities serve her in the slightest as a defense. The ideal woman of orthodoxy can only survive behind protective barriers. At the slightest contact with adversity, the slightest destabilization at the core, the entire structure collapses. This woman broke my heart to write. These characters really drove the story for me. Even when I think Meyer could have fleshed out some of their backstories or the general world building of her novel, I couldn't help but talk to my favorites as I was reading and guess where their journeys might lead them next. This is Myers' debut novel and I'm struck by her beautiful descriptive language. I pored over this story for weeks, both wanting to finish it quickly and to linger for a long while. According to her website, her sequel is coming out in 2018 and so far has the title of Fire Dance. Personally, I can't wait for it. You can find links to my full book reviews down below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you had a Merry Christmas, Hag Sameach Hanukkah, and Happy Holidays. I'll see you next time.